So hey everyone, my name is Adam Lane. I'm a marketing coordinator with PEI. And the purpose of this call is to address some common questions about Link, uh, Microsoft Link and its capabilities with some of the experts that work with it every single day. On the line with us is Jacob Beaker, PEI's Director of Engineering, overseeing our infrastructure and networking teams. Say hi, Jacob. Hi, everyone. Uh, Jacob leads our pre-sales discussions related to all aspects of client environments and is a Microsoft VTSP. And next on the line, I want to introduce Adam Ball, PEI's Senior Infrastructure Engineer. If you could uh, say hi, Adam. Hi. Adam is also a Microsoft VTSP with a breadth of experience in the unified communications, storage, virtualization, and data center spaces. And lastly, we have Heidi Christensen. Heidi, if you want to say hi. Hello. Heidi is PEI's PMI Certified Associated Product Pro Project Manager and Link uh, Trainer. So uh, I'm going to go through the questions. And first, we have uh, a couple questions for Jacob. And the first one is, Jacob, you can give us a high-level definition of Microsoft Link and what it can do for an organization. Sure. Uh, Microsoft Link is really a unified communication platform that encompasses uh, instant messaging, presence, um, enterprise voice capabilities, conferencing capabilities for both web conferencing functionality as well as voice conferencing functionality. Uh, and mobility capabilities that, that ensue within all of those different workloads that uh, Microsoft Link can provide. Um, so companies will often bring that in to unify all these uh, disparate communication methods that they use to bring it into a single uh, solution instead of having those uh, multiple, multiple uh, selections that they have in place to, to deal with those now. Okay. And what are the benefits of Link versus some of the other solutions that are out there in the market right now? Probably the biggest benefit that Link provides uh, over other solutions is the flexibility that it provides to uh, the company as for their users as well as for the IT department. Um, you know, first of all, this is a software-based uh, unified communication platform, so it means that uh, companies are not having to invest in large iron to be able to put a unified communication platform in place. Um, the solution can be virtualized, so if they have a virtualization infrastructure based on VMware or on Microsoft Hyper-V, uh, they can utilize that infrastructure that they have already uh, invested in to be able to put the uh, unified communication suite in place. Um, also, for the user side, there's flexibility as far as uh, you know how they're going to use Microsoft Link. Microsoft Link is really centered around the user and less so around the devices like other solutions can provide. Um, what that means is uh, the users can use their, their PC as a link endpoint. They can use a smartphone or a tablet. Um, they can have a, a standalone handset for the voice solution. Um, you know, pretty much the, the options are endless as far as the, uh, how the clients are going to interact or the users are going to interact with uh, Microsoft Link. Um, you know, it, gives them, it gives them flexibility as far as if they're on the road or if they're in the office. Um, at a hotel or wherever they may be um, to be, be able to bring Link up and have it accessible pretty much immediately. Um, so it, it really gives that flexibility within that. It is also very much integrated into all the Microsoft applications that exist out there. Um, if we're talking about Outlook, it's tied into uh, you know, every email and every function within Outlook. If we're talking about Microsoft CRM, it is tied into there. If we're talking about SharePoint, uh, link is tied in. Link functionality is tied into uh, you know SharePoint as well. Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Any of the Microsoft applications have some inclusion for Link. It is there now. It just may not be turned on for organizations that have not implemented Microsoft Link as as of this point. Um, so it, what that really means is that uh, they have flexibility as far as the devices that they're going to use. It, it, is, it makes it very easy for user adoption simply because it's already integrated into applications they're using for their day-to-day -day, uh, work at this point. Um, so it, it, it makes it uh, you know, a very flexible and easy-to-use solution for the, the companies that choose to put it in place. Okay. And when it comes to those companies, um, why would they want to choose PEI as a Microsoft Link partner? Good question. Well. My, PEI has been involved with uh, you know, unified communications really for about 25 years at this point. 
Um, when Microsoft Link first came out, first of all, it was named uh, Office Communication Server at that point. It came out in about 2007. And uh, Microsoft came to us and asked us to be part of a technical advisory program because of our history and our experience with uh, you know, unified communications up to that point. Um, that technical advisory program had roughly about 60 companies involved with it worldwide. Um, so we were part of a very select group of people that were uh, you know, involved to really bring out you know, the unified communication solution with Office Communication Server at that point. We have been involved with that technical advisory program and involved with building uh, Microsoft Link since that point through the different uh, renditions that have come out since 2007. So um, we've really been on the forefront of you know the the uh, progression that Microsoft Link has become and what it has become today. Um, also, we've implemented uh, Microsoft Link in a number of, of client environments. We have over 10,000 seats of Microsoft Link deployed. Um, you know, throughout our client base that we have at this point. We are also seen from Microsoft's viewpoint as a go-to partner for Microsoft Link. So when they need something to be done, if they need a uh, service to be provided, they turn to us and ask us to provide those services for the clients. Um, so it, it leads to our credibility. And we, we are seen within the, at least within the Western United States, if not in the whole United States, we are seen as an authority for the services that we have been able to provide in, and with the technical knowledge that we have with, uh, with our engineering. Um, so we have a very uh, deep bench of, of knowledge that we've built and uh, core practice that we've built around Microsoft Link. Um, and clients can take advantage of that by using our services. Um, lastly, we also chair the Unified Communication User Group, the Colorado Unified Communication User Group which its whole purpose is to extend the knowledge that people have within Microsoft Link so that we broaden the, the knowledge base that's out there for Microsoft Link and for our clients as well as for other partners um, that are part of that group. So hopefully that answers your question as, well, as far as why people should choose uh, PEI as, as their link partner. Definitely. Thank you, Jacob. Sure. Um, Adam, the next two questions are for you. Okay. Can you speak about Link Voice and the difference between Link Online and Enterprise Voice services? Sure. The, the biggest thing that's the difference between Enterprise Voice when integrating with Link on Pre if you have Link on Premise versus Link Online is going to be your connectivity to the public switch telephone network. Also, most people hear it as PSTN. The PSTN is your ability to communicate with your cell phone, your home phone. So the idea is Enterprise Voice enables a Link user to be able to call out from their Link client to their cell phone, to a, to a home phone, something of that nature. Link Online does not currently provide that uh, service. Link Online gives you the ability to make voice calls uh, from Link client to Link client or Link client to Skype client. Um, so that's, that would be the biggest difference between Enterprise Voice and Link Online. Okay, and what about the uh, size company that best is best fit for Link and who it makes most sense for? Any company can, can utilize Link. Smaller organizations might choose to utilize Link Online uh, and go with Office 365 for that service. They might find better value with that. Larger companies uh, really can utilize Link On-Premise uh, as their PBX, so therefore they, they can find even better value with it with the ability to replace traditional phone systems, maybe traditional handsets that cost uh, four, five, six hundred dollars per per desktop, they can now now take the that money and put it into a soft client that users can use from anywhere. Awesome, thank you, Adam. Uh, lastly, my question is for you, Heidi. Um, why is Microsoft Link training so important within within an organization once it's implemented? Well, simply put, you want to maximize the return on your investment. If people aren't using the tool and the full capabilities of the tool, you're missing out on the cost savings of implementing Link. Furthermore, anytime you have a new technology being implemented across an organization that's going to impact end users, you want a migration and adoption plan that will ensure a seamless transition. So a big part of that plan is awareness before the go-live event and training end users. Awesome. Thank you, Heidi. Um, that concludes our uh, video conversation. I wanted to thank all three of you for joining in. This was uh, 
very beneficial, I think, for all uh, end users. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.